So yes, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, dear participants of uh, the summer school. Warm regards to Ghent University here from Ilmenau in Thuringia in Germany. I hope you have already had inspiring days and I would like to welcome you to my presentation on reliability and stability of silicon carbide devices. Especially, I would like to present uh, our activities in uh, developing of new robustness, dynamic robustness tests for silicon carbide devices, uh, the dynamic reverse bias test and the dynamic H3 TRB test. Before I start with uh, technical topics, let me shortly introduce myself. My name is Tobias Reimann. I am from uh, the ISLE company in Ilmenau, and this company uh, is a small company with about uh, 20 engineers, uh, experts in power electronics and power electronic systems and power devices. We have more than 25 years experience in development of systems, but also in characterization and test and application of power semiconductor devices. Um, we developed the test benches for dynamic robustness tests, um, as well as for standard double pulse test. And I am the uh, general manager of this company. On the other hand, I have a second job. I have the professorship in industrial electronic at uh, Ilmenau Technical University directly here in the neighborhood. And there my special field is uh, power electronic device, uh, power uh, electronic device, uh, power semiconductor device application. Yes, uh, what are the today's key topics in R&D on silicon carbide devices if we uh, look to robustness and reliability? And uh, in the presentation before by, by uh, Jörg Franke, some of these uh, topics were discussed. You see here a short overview from power cycling capability over short circuit, surge current, bipolar degradation, um, threshold voltage uh, effects, bias temperature instabilities, gate oxide uh, topics, failure mechanisms, uh, and uh, especially failure mechanisms by dynamic stress situation. What uh, are the targets of all these uh, activities. Um, yeah, the development of a deep understanding of physical mechanisms by simulations and experiments. This is a very, very important point because uh, all the tests we would like to define and we would like to develop must be um, yeah, in very tight connection with the physical background. This is very important. Of course, the power devices should be improved. The test methods must be developed. And then we have a big, big activities in um, international standardization processes. The standardization activities worldwide are mainly driven, for example, by the automotive industry. And here I summarize some activities here on the left side, the JEDEC, the Joint Electron Device Engineering Council. There are two working groups dealing with white band gap power semiconductor devices, one working group for silicon carbide, one for gallium nitride. Then here on the right side, the European Center for Power Electronics. There is a big um, yeah, partnership in uh, standardization concerning the AQG three to four. Um, here I will I will go more in detail later on. This one here, the AEC Q101. This uh, activity is uh, already 
many years old. Yeah, it comes from the Automotive Electronics Council, and the target is standardization of uh, electronic components for um, yeah systems for automotive applications. And then, besides all these activities, of course, the OEMs have their own standardization, and you see. All these uh, activities worldwide must be harmonized. This is very important. If we have a special look to the ECPE guideline AQG 3 to 4 process, this means the qualification of power modules for use in power electronics converters units in motor vehicles. And the um, actual draft covers silicon and uh, silicon carbide power modules. The latest release you can find and download from the internet is from May 31st, 2021. And here is a link. Um, I would like to invite you to, to go to this link yeah, after the, the summer school. If you are interested in more details, have a look to it. Then you get a good feeling, um, yeah, how big are these activities yeah, and uh, how big are the community uh, in this activity? What are the targets? These chapters here are very important because the chapter six and seven of the standard deals with module testing and characterization. The chapter eight is the environmental testing. And the chapter nine um, discuss topics concerning lifetime testing. What are the targets? At first, the updating the standards for silicon modules based on current state of knowledge and uh, current state of silicon technologies. The second one is a critical review of the suitability of silicon test standards for the silicon carbide world. Because in the silicon carbide world, we have uh, special physical mechanisms, special physical effects, and uh, so the test procedures and the standards and the parameters must be developed for this uh, special effects, for this new mechanisms. Then the standards, very well known from the silicon world, must to be adapted to the silicon carbide world, to the silicon carbide devices there. We have the annex of the standard. I will uh, come back to it later. And new tests have to be defined for silicon carbide devices. Let's have a look into the annex three of the uh, current draft of the standard for silicon carbide modules. This NX3 can be divided in different parts. The first one is uh, the module test, the QMs. Here we have some uh, standard tests like um, double patch test, for example, to measure the uh, switching losses and something like that. And um, this test was um, copied from the silicon world accepted the gate source threshold voltage measurement. Yes, this was adapted for silicon carbide modules because in the silicon carbide uh, uh, device world, we have some special threshold voltage effects. And so the measurements, uh, measure procedures must be adapted. The second part is that characterizing module testing QC, you see that this part um, is copying unchanged from silicon to silicon carbide. And the same situation we have for the classical environmental testing procedures like thermal shock, contactability, vibration, mechanical shock, and something like that. Very interesting is the view on the lifetime testing uh, methods, the 
QL. And here you see a lot of changes compared to uh, silicon. The power cycling test and the, uh, in the uh, second um, time range, in the minute time range, must be adapted. The high temperature storage and low temperature storage test can be copied unchanged. unchanged. The high temperature reverse bias test is adapted. The dynamic reverse bias test is new. I will show you um, later what does it mean. The high temperature gate bias was adapted. Dynamic gate stress is new. H3 TRB is adapted. And then this is interesting. There is an additional dynamic H3 TRB test. This is new and the same uh, for HDFB and dynamic HDFB. Um, that means the high temperature forward bias test. OK, let's come to the dynamic reverse bias test. What is the purpose? It is to trigger an expected failure mode. And uh, the expected failure mode is the aging of the, of the die due to fast charging of internal structures, internal on the chip caused by very high EVDT. That means the device under test is stressed by very fast DVDT slopes. And um, the, the, the target parameters are, for example, 50 volt per nanosecond at high repetitive frequency. Yes, our tests here uh, run in a range from 25 kilohertz up to 200 kilohertz. And during the very high DVDT slope, we have a big voltage difference because we switch between uh, drain source voltage zero up to 0.8 of the maximum drain source voltage. Now, for example, if you have a 1200 volt silicon carbide MOSFET, then this uh, high level is 960 volt. Yeah, during the test, we stress the chip with, uh, let's say, 25 or 50 or 100 kilohertz voltage between 0 and 960 volt with very high DVDT. How we can it realize? The test circuit seems to be very simple. We need a simple classical half bridge with one switch on the top side and one switch on the bottom side. Both transistors and both diodes can be devices under test. The duty cycle is uh, typically 0.5, and the signal for T2 is inverted to T1, um, and there is a small uh, interlock uh, dead time, for example, let's say 50 nanoseconds, 100 nanoseconds. It depends on the size of the die. Um, of the MOSFET. And if you turn on T1 or T2, then the capacitances of the power devices, of the devices under test will be charged and discharged respectively. And during this process, very high DVDT can be generated. We have uh, a large number of tests performed and uh, a lot of setups realized and uh, optimized. And now we are able to test uh, power devices up to the 1,700 volt voltage class with DVDT slopes up to 400 volt per nanoseconds. This is an extremely high uh, value and not easily to realize because uh, 
you you must be very carefully for example if you design this driver you need a uh, driver circuits with this very high common mode frenzy and immunity is this a cmti important cmti parameter and uh, uh, other challenges are to get symmetrical slopes that means that the dvdt for the rising slope is nearly the same as the dvdt for the falling slope and another challenge we don't like to have uh, oscillations or uh, yeah dangerous over voltage caused by the oscillations uh, in a range of the breakdown of the power device but here in this case you see that uh, we achieved for example 360 volt per nanoseconds for um, the rising slope and uh, more than 200 volt per nanoseconds during the falling slope. Here you see a, a, a picture from, from our lab. This is a test setup for a discrete devices under test in the TO247 3 pin or 4 pin. This is only one, one example. We can adapt here this area for other TO packages or for SMD uh, packages. Uh, and 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 uh, yeah, other standards and or for open um, substrate with the chips on the surface of the substrate. Yes, here you see the 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 drivers. You see the power supply for the drivers. You see that uh, there is a very tight, um, let's say, commutation loop with minimized parasitic elements, parasitic uh, inductances, parasitic capacitances in this loop. And all these um, yeah, uh, design measures are uh, necessary to get, for example, this quality of slopes here um, in the range of more than 200 volts per nanosecond. This test we uh, carried out in a frequency range up to uh, 200 kilohertz, and it's possible to do it under uh, room temperature conditions, but uh, we can integrate the setup uh, in climate chambers to uh, come to more yeah, uh, sophisticated conditions, especially at 85 degrees C ambient temperature and uh, 85% uh, humidity. This is the same test, but we have uh, other devices, other, other packages. This, for example, is an open substrate. Here you see the die. Yes, the die is a device under test, for example, on the top side and on the bottom side. And we have to contact to the commutation group and to the driver area. And then we can uh, contact the voltage probes by uh, yeah by special pins to the surface here of the substrate. Um, it is very important to check the temperature. Here you see a, a temperature photo, a yes, thermography a picture. Uh, sometimes I get the question why you have to check the temperature, why you have losses, you have no current in your test circuit. This is an open car, open um, yeah, half bridge without any load. But uh, you have to consider this uh, charging and discharging of the capacitances, of the own capacitances of the devices under test leads to an important part of power losses because of the high repetitive switching frequency and this is the reason therefore that you need heat sinks here and here and that you have to check the temperature on the surface of your devices under test to optimize the operating point of this test here is one example of an operating point for this um, dut on substrate typical uh, gate source, source voltages for silicon carbide power MOSFET DC link 960 volt RG temperatures switching frequency 100 kilohertz and uh, yeah here you can uh, you can you can read the slope 
parameters we achieved. And here are some waveforms, some uh, yeah, voltage waveforms for the rising edge and the falling. Let's come to the dynamic H3 TRB test. This test is very similar to the DRB, very, very similar. One um, important difference is that we uh, have to carry out the test at high temperature and high humidity. There is a demand concerning the voltage slope, the switching frequency. And um, the purpose is to have an additional generic chip robustness test for the mod module technology is very similar to DRB, but uh, under climate, uh, as I already mentioned, and optionally under load current stress. That means this test is closer to a uh, real application. Yeah. How we can do it? Um, one simple possibility is to build up the very well-known buck converter. There's a buck converter. There is one switch on the uh, bottom side, one on the top side. Both devices can be devices under test. And we have a ohmic inductive load to, uh, yeah, to adjust the current. And um, yeah, we, we developed such uh, test circuits up to 1,700 volt uh, voltage class devices. And uh, concerning the operation mode of the circuit, you have two possibilities. You can use a discontinuous conduction mode in this buck converter, then you have such uh, yeah, current peaks in the load. And you can turn on and turn off at these values here, or you use uh, uh, the condition, um, the continuous conduction mode, but if you use the, con, uh, the continuous con conduction mode, you can uh, have only small load current. And the reason is that you have uh, losses inside of this load resistor. And it's not easy to, to cool it and to uh, keep the total losses of the setup um, uh, yeah, low. How does it look like? Here are some photos from our lab. Here are the load, the load bank for a certain number of test circuits. You can, it, can see it here, yes. And um, here you see the devices under test with uh, the driver and all the components in the direct environment around the devices under test. And, uh, the devices are implemented into a climate chamber to get the uh, 85 degrees C ADRH um, test conditions. Okay. And uh, at the end of my presentation, finally, let's have an um, additional short look to another very, very important dynamic stress test. This test is outside the AQG 3 to 4 standardization or uh, yeah, uh, draft, standard draft. But this test is um, yeah, interesting from the point of application. Because uh, the unclamped inductive switching test delivers us information about the avalanche robustness of the power device. Avalanche robustness and avalanche capability in real applications is very often requested by the system designer, especially in the switched mode power supply world. There are um, a lot of power converter topologies with uh, higher inductances in the commutation loop coming for example, from stray inductances of transformers. And uh, in some critical operation conditions of the power supply, there is a risk of 
avalanche breakdown. And uh, this is a background that uh, a lot of power supply designers would have a certain uh, avalanche capability, avalanche robustness of transistors, of diodes, or something like that. In this circuit, transistors and or diodes can be the devices under tests. Test of the cell design and thermal limits. This is a key point why we carry out um, such tests and uh, the avalanche mode can be divided uh, in two types. The first one is a single pulse and the other one is a repetitive, repetitive avalanche mode. We have a large number of tests performed and a large number of setups developed. And so we have uh, yeah, experience. Yeah, this photo shows you a test bank. You have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, yeah, totally more than 20 uh, of such test cells where we can carry out repetitive avalanche tests with a yeah, small lot of, for example, discrete power MOSFETs in this case here. These are typical waveforms for um, this unclamped inductive switching. Here you see a single pulse test. This is a complete test cycle. We turn on the power MOSFETs, the uh, current um, rises and then we turn off against the uh, inductor inside of the circuit and uh, an over voltage will be generated. You can see it here better in this zoomed uh, figure and there is an avalanche, the typical avalanche breakdown of the power device and during the avalanche breakdown the current uh, goes down to zero and uh, yeah, huge amount of energy can be dissipated, dissipated in the device under test. And for the system designer, it is very interesting to know where are the limits up to destruction of the device. And here you can see um, repetitive avalanche robustness test with a, a high repetitive frequency, in this case uh, 24 kilohertz. And uh, yeah, this test delivers um, results concerning the long-term stability under repetitive avalanche uh, stress situation. Let's conclude. The standardization is an ongoing process, not a static state. I guess this is very important to know um, today, in, in this times, we learn that um, we need a very tight discussion between the experts in power device physics and the application engineers and the experts in developing of test uh, systems. And this is a, yeah, it's a discussion process. This is ongoing, this is not a static state. The development and definition of the test procedures and test parameters must be accompanied by a deep understanding of the physical failure mechanisms. This is very important to know. And here we need iterative loops yeah, um, till we come to a final definition of, 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 of test and if we understand um, the failure mechanism and how we can um, yeah, initiate such failures by acceler accelerated uh, tests, for example. The transferability of the test procedures from the silicon world to the silicon carbide world must be very carefully verified. And uh, finally, this is uh, yeah, an, an important point, the interests of power supply device manufacturers, users, customers, and test system providers must be carefully aligned. This is a classical stakeholder conflict. Uh, and here we need um, an open discussion, a fair discussion, and uh, a successful discussion. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, maybe there is one minute for questions.